the Antichrist? Why will so many follow him? Well, we're going to talk about that. And uh, before we get into it, um, I want to share with you a small clip from a video we did about a year or so ago. And it's more relevant now than it was then. So check this out. Uh, uh, I was watching this documentary and I actually found it to be quite informative and um, it's not really a, it's not a Christian documentary it's a National Geographic documentary featuring Morgan Freeman talking about how various religious groups view God and eschatology and the Antichrist and here uh, Morgan Freeman's going to have this dialogue with this uh, Orthodox Jewish individual and he's going to share what Jews are expecting with the coming Messiah. They have this coming Messiah. They don't believe that is Jesus right now yet, but they are expecting the Messianic figure. And uh, look at what this individual says to Morgan Freeman. What's his name? Orthodox Jews believe that without this temple, their religious rites are incomplete. So they await the day when their temple is rebuilt. So they're talking about here how they believe that the temple, the third temple, will be rebuilt. Okay, Jews believe that. Many Christians believe that. Let's keep watching. Is there a Messiah? In Judaism? In Judaism. Jews invented the Messiah. But it's not the same Messiah that most people think about. Okay. Because right, when Christians think of the Messiah, they think of someone who's divine. Yeah. What we have for the Messiah is a man, a king of this earth, who's going to bring peace among the nations in this world. And Euron tells me this mortal Messiah has a very specific to-do list. According to Jewish tradition, he has three things he's supposed to do. Number one, he's going to reconstitute the Jewish kingdom or the Jewish state. Number two, he's going to bring peace with the neighbors. And number three, he's going to rebuild that rebuild temple. The temple. So you heard it right there. The Jewish people are expecting that their messianic figure is going to be a man, a king. They believe that he's going to bring world peace. They believe that he's going to bring a government. And they believe that he is going to uh, rebuild the temple, the third temple. <laughs> Why is that significant? Because these are the exact same things that the Antichrist is promising to do. The Antichrist will come onto the scene with promises of bringing this utopian government. He's going to come onto the scene as a political kingly leader. And he's going to have something to do with the establishment of a temple. The Antichrist, my friends, is going to claim to be the long-awaited messianic figure of the Jewish people. Wow. And everything that they're expecting their Messiah to do, the Antichrist is going to come and basically fulfill. Now, the Antichrist, if he tries to establish a third temple, it's not going to be the true temple of God because we as the body of Christ are the temple of God. The true Messiah did establish a temple. You see, every messianic figure must establish a temple. That's why Jesus said <laughs> that his temple, his house, will be in his people, okay? And nothing will come against it. And so Jesus established a temple, not a physical one, but a spiritual one within our body. Jesus, the true Messiah, established that. And when the false Messiah comes, it is likely that he will also try to establish some type of brick and mortar temple. It won't be the true temple of God, but it's something that will be a deception to the world to cause them to believe that he is the true Messiah. So you can clearly see now how this uh, this Antichrist figure is going to so easily try to convince the world that he is the long-awaited Jewish Messiah. I mean, everything that they are expecting, this guy is going to come and basically do. And 
And so what you will find is that really of all of the major Abrahamic faiths, there's this Messiah figure who is supposed to arrive around the end of days. And not only with Judaism, but also with Islam. We know that in Islam, they are also expecting the coming Messiah. And they will even tell you that it will be Jesus. They will tell you that we believe Jesus is going to come as king. That's what most Muslims believe. So you can understand why there is the argument that when the false Messiah comes, the Antichrist, that the first thing he will want to do is bring a unification of the Abrahamic faiths. Why? Because if he can bring those in Islam, and in those in Judaism together, imagine the power he would have if both of those huge religions saw him as their messianic figure. And so now you see why in Matthew 24, when Jesus is explaining what will be taking place prior to his return, he says that false messiahs and false prophets will appear and they will perform great signs and miracles to deceive. And so it is understandable why the Antichrist will most definitely try to convince those of uh, Islam and Judaism. And even he says, if possible, deceive the elect. He's really referring to believers with this. He would try to deceive even the religious groups that he is their Messiah. And the big question that must be addressed here is how are we to know really the difference between this false Messiah and when Jesus, the true Messiah returns. We have many videos that will help to explain that, but um, just in short, there is one thing that happens before Christ returns the resurrection. When Jesus returns, it says in 1 Thessalonians that the Lord will come down from heaven with the loud command, the voice of the archangel, the trumpet call of God, and the dead in Christ will rise first. And then it explains how we who are alive and remain will also be caught up into the air to meet him. And so you will know that it is Jesus who is here when all of his believers rise with immortal bodies. Okay, if you're here on earth and you don't have your immortal body and you have not risen and there is some figure that seems to fit the description of the false Messiah, you will know it is not the true Messiah because the resurrection has not yet taken place. The dead in Christ will rise um, and those alive to meet him in the air. Now, it is important to note that when Jesus returns, it says that there will be this trumpet Okay, a trumpet will be blown. Now, this also parallels what Paul writes in 1 Corinthians when he says that uh, there will be this last trumpet that is blown and then uh, we will be changed. There will be this rising, this resurrection. And so in Matthew, we see that there is a trumpet blown when he returns. Matthew 24, about the coming of the Son of Man, it says immediately after the tribulation of those days, basically you're going to have a lot of catastrophic events taking place. And then it says, then the sign of the Son of Man will appear in the sky. Everyone will see him, all of the earth, all people will mourn. And then it says, he then will send out his angels with what? There's that trumpet. So we know that if Paul says that we are caught up at the last trumpet and here we have a trumpet, we know this is referring to the same event Paul was speaking to when he says that we will be caught up. And here it says that uh, once they blow that trumpet, the last trumpet, there isn't going to be one after this. That's when the angels will gather his elect. What does elect mean? Well, you go to the Greek, that is the word eklektos, which refers to those chosen by God, the Christians, the elect, his people. He's going to gather us at that last trumpet and uh, we will be gathered to the heavens to meet him. And then after that, of course, he will come and bring his kingdom on the earth. And so again, the true Messiah, Jesus returns at the last trumpet when all of his people are resurrected and immortal bodies. And so I say this, and this is so important, and please help get this message out, that any so-called messianic figure here 
performing miracles and wonders. I mean, he's going to have a lot of miracles and things happening. So don't be mis don't be like the world trying to see what you can see that's miraculous as your proof. No, your proof that it is the that it is Jesus returning is when you see him face to face in the sky in your new body. Okay, so there you have it. Um, spread the word. Now, this is kind of an aside to uh, what we have been working on. We are still working on the law video. It is under a lot of heavy production right now. Uh, for the past like three months, we've been working on the research. You know, with the, when you deal with such such a subject, um, research is such a huge part of it, especially. Um, with this and it has been intense research and now you're at the point of heavy production editing uh animating a lot of that is actually in the finishing process and so i would say around the end of september um probably the earliest um that should be out and so god bless you thanks for uh, listening tuning in take care <laughs>